albatross around the egg. No more like a millstone. A plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, The Heart of Horror. Uh, a podcast all about about love and all its many horrible faces. Uh, and with me, as ever, is the the delightful, the occasionally slimy, the <laughs> the, the, the pineal <laughs> Kate Pollock. <laughs> is that too much? Should I not call you occasionally slimy? <laughs> It just, you know, it was just really funny because I first when like because when I, <laughs> when I uh, hi everyone by the way, uh, when I, you know we I don't know if you guys say it in this context over in America but like or anywhere else but in England if someone's a bit slimy they're a bit like creepy a bit gross and I, initially that's what I thought you meant and then I was like oh no I get it. like it like it took a second <laughs> yeah 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 no that there, <laughs> yeah there there is that connotation for sure of. <laughs> uh in in you know our language here the american english um but no 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 i'm in in the the good old-fashioned goopy yeah no got it Mm -hmm, got it yeah thanks (laughs) uh because you know because this movie is nothing if not goopy yeah yeah (laughs) um thanks yeah you're welcome um (laughs) It was funny because the other day, like, I was talking to my parents, because uh, here in the UK, it was Mother's Day. Mm. So I called up my mum. My mum lives abroad, so I don't see her in that way. I give her a call. And, like, and uh, I was saying, oh, I've got a recording coming up and stuff with Bo. And I was, and I can't remember why I said it. It was relevant. But, like, I was like, oh, you know, Bo always does these really over-the-top, like, introductions for me. And he always, like, uh, you know, says these really lovely things. And, and then you come up with <laughs> <laughs> like the ever slimy <laughs> and that just made me laugh <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, usually yeah usually they're a lot more positive but you know uh, hey, that's not not positive is it no 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 i mean look there's other connotations of slimy I'm... that are just fine you know what i'm saying oh wait that's not okay that's just initially what i thought yeah, that's just what like where i went to immediately so yeah. I mean, yeah. look, you you end up with some slimy shorts, then that's probably are, a good <laughs> afternoon. There are some, uh, yeah, there are worse worse things to be. I think. I think it's just the the word itself is like a bit, well, slimy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like uh, the word moist. It's oh, like people. Yeah, I think we've had this discussion. I can't deal with it. <laughs> yeah, where where people are just like, I'm, you know, I'm done with this word. I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, although it's a bit of a hashtag on my other show, like um, my uh, gorgeous and delightful friend Sabrina um, came and uh, guested on our show mm-hmm. last year, and we were we were uh, covering one of the movies we covered was Byzantium with um, Gemma Arterton. And oh yeah, yeah. Hashtag moist definitely came up during that, and also hashtag arterial spray. Um, so, because uh, you know, everyone loves a good, <clears throat> a good spray, sure. um, especially if you're yeah. moist. Especially if you're hashtag moist. Uh, so I'm like, eh, moist, but at the same time, like that word now has such a great connotation for me. Like, so it's, it's kind of eh, moist, but also oh, moist. <laughs> <laughs> but also, oh, oh, yeah, good times. <laughs> no, yeah, nobody ever like it, it ha- approaches the word moist with like uh uh like all, almost a, a fondness like nobody's ever like oh i yeah. love uh, moist um yeah me and sabrina do now <laughs> oh. that's good that's good i'm yeah. glad it, it, it i, I would i feel like more people should respond to it like if you see a puppy like fall down you know something like <laughs> oh, that yeah, like oh like, yeah. look at that little moist little yeah it's of kind bitch. of like a running joke in, in my other show now just a hashtag moist nice um <laughs> but speaking of moist so uh, what, what we're talking about uh here in march is uh the movie from beyond mm-hmm. um a sort of spiritual sequel to reanimator i mean it was it it came on the heels of reanimator directed by Stuart gordon a lot of the same cast a lot of the same cast uh an hp lovecraft adaptation Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of similarities but also from beyond is a very different kind of movie i think yeah this was my first watch and actually i thought it was 
I thought it was part of all the same family. I mean, I suppose if you look at it in what we've just listed there, it, it kind of is um, with Reanimator, but like, but it's its own thing. It's not actually, um, but like, yeah, I always had it as I thought. I thought it was like, you know, like almost like a spin-off, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But no, it's not. Um, so yeah, this was like a first watch for me. That's exciting because um, so, I feel like I've exciting. seen. Look you know this is a conversation i've had with a number of uh of other people about the movie from beyond that yeah. probably mostly males uh i had this conversation with but i saw from beyond because i had seen reanimator and i thought it was great and then when from beyond came out i was like oh i got to see from beyond and there was a sexual awakening yeah okay. that happened in the in the viewing of from beyond where i was like is this a thing I'm into? Yeah. I think it is. Um, mostly due to Barbara Crampton, I mean, who yeah. is, you know, obviously Well, I was in that film and... you wanting to work one out to. Like, I, like, what else would you want to work one out to in this film? I mean, but, like, all right, so with Reanimator, there was the whole thing about, like, oh, she's getting, you know, eaten out by the decapitated yeah, yeah. head, which is shocking, but it it's not really sexy, no, you no, know. Not at all. You know, especially because of the way that she's kind of howling, and you know, it's like it's an unsettling scene, and it's weird, and you know, I'm it it certainly sets Reanimator apart as as you know, just a movie of note. Mm. Um, but from beyond, like when she is getting all gussied up in the leather, <laughs> yeah, and and is clearly turned on by it like that was a thing where like i said me and me and some other you know guys that i have talked to over the years were like oh yeah that was definitely a thing where it was like oh yes barbara crampton in you know a leather corset or bustier like a bit of an awakening like a and, pink awakening right right uh of like oh yeah this is a thing that i find you know, it, whether it's because of Barbara Crampton being the, you know, person in said leather bustier or not, but there's something, you know, like there, th this movie is decidedly kinky. Yeah. Did you, uh, you know, did you ever like, have you ever, um, like been with anybody who's like sort of, as you, to coin your term, gussied up in, uh, you know, in like PVC or leather or anything like that? Has that been something like, oh, hey, could you, uh, would you mind? you know, getting the old PVC on or the old latex or whatever. Is that anything that you did? Yeah. Or like, or like, especially like, it's like a younger male, like as a kid, like, you know, you know, when it, cause I suppose like, you know, as you get older asking for sexual like preferences, like, Oh, Hey, I'm really into that. It's less of a, a thing. Like you kind of like the, um, like your kind of like nerves about asking about those sorts of things kind of tends to go down like as you realize oh mm -hmm. everybody does it you know <laughs> but like <laughs> right it's not it's as not unusual as like as I've gotten yeah. older I'm just like oh so there's a good chunk of people into kink cool all right all right nice and I don't have to be so like uh like guarded about it but obviously like when you're a lot younger like you know late teens early 20s whatever you like you know you're a bit more you know a bit more nervous about asking about those things or like approaching those things with a partner like did you ever have a moment of oh so you know hey sandy I'm, i don't know why i went i don't know why i went to greece of all things in my head then um but like you know oh hey sandy like uh would you ever want to do this like have i you know like was there a moment like that for you where you kind of like wanted to lay out your barbara crampton fantasy yeah so here's the thing i discovered about myself fairly uh -huh. early on i think um is that i am not i don't it's it's not because i'm terribly reserved or anything uh, but i'm generally not the kink instigator okay um but I'll, all right so just for listeners uh uh yes kink is what we're talking about in this episode <laughs> um I'm not necessarily the kink instigator, but one of the formative things that happened to me, there were two things, one of which I turned down, and I may have told this story on the show before. If I did, I apologize. But there was a guy that I went to school with, uh, uh, college with, a guy that I only knew as Groundhog. <laughs> and 
Groundhog was known. He was in a, a bike club. He he was a, a biker. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, that makes more and, sense. Now. Yeah, and it was called Groundhog because he would lay his right, bike yeah. down. So that's why he got right, the nickname okay. Groundhog. And um, but anyway, we had a philosophy cl- class together. Groundhog all, uh, also, by the way, one of the first people to really turn me on to mystery science theater. Oh, three times. good. Um, he was. A, Super cool guy, very fun. I really loved, uh, like, because we had a philosophy class together, and I think we had a break in class at, at about the same time, if memory serves. And so we'd, like, go back to his place and watch a little MST3K oh, okay. and his old lady, which uh, that was his oh, words, yeah, not no, mine, but his old lady. I know, I, know, I, know the, I know the lingo. <laughs> Yeah. So you're right. Yeah, you're practically <laughs> oh, yeah, a biker right? yourself I, if you've watched Sons of Anarchy. I just up and everything in the like, oh, hey, what's up? I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get my like threads and shit. <laughs> yeah. So uh, his old lady would like make sandwiches for oh, us, so and we watch crazy. MST three K, and it was great. Like we we had a great time. Anyway, so Groundhog calls me up, and I'm probably nineteen right. at the time. And, you know, I was not a virgin, but I would not say I was a a sexual adventurer. Like, I was still at the stage of, like, I am so happy to be part of sex. (laughs) I'm just glad to be here, guys. Like, you know. (laughs) Yeah, it never occurred to me. Like, I was not at the stage of, like, let's put a little English on this. Like, (laughs) we need, how about we, (laughs) we need to put a little mustard on it and see see how that works. Um, I was still at the the stage of, like, I am just thrilled to be having the Mm -hmm. sex. I don't, don't I don't need, need anything garnish, fancy. No. Right, right. Although I had seen from beyond and I knew that garnish yeah, was out there. I did need the garnish at uh, 19, but Well look, you're uh, more of a libertine. No, I actually I've got sure. a story after this relevant and it that was my kink awakening. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So here's like I was like I knew that kink was out there, but like I again, I was not I was still very yeah. vanilla. Uh not that I am you know, you're uh, like Chuck, you're King like Master General these days, right but anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so Groundhog calls me up one day, and he's like, hey, I was wondering if you might be interested in something It's a little strange. Oh. And I was like, go mm-hmm. on. And he's like, well, you're not, you're not dating anybody right now, are you? And I was like, no, I'm not dating anybody right now. He said, "All right, so if you just had random sex with somebody, that would be okay." And I was like, "Okay, that sounds great. What's the <laughs> deal?" And he said, "Well, we've got uh, my old lady has this friend of hers that has a kink, and her kink is uh, she has a rape fantasy." Uh, and uh, so, so what? She, I already know where what this she is going. Wants, this is hilarious. Okay. So what she wants is she's going to give you a place and time and you're gonna go meet her at this place at the given place and given time and you're essentially gonna kidnap her and rape her and it's like it's all it's all above like board like she, this is yeah. what she wants you know but like yeah CNC. that's the, the, like her kink is for it to to have non-consensual yeah. sex even though it's consensual yeah, CNC, you know, consensual it's the, non-consensual exactly um. so <laughs> Uh, and at which point I was like, absolutely not. Because what if I get the wrong person? <laughs> you know, like if, if the whole deal is. I shouldn't find that so funny because if that happened, that would be the most horrific thing. But fuck me, that's so funny. Right. And also, again, I'm like 19, 20 years old and I'm still at the happy to be here stage, not at the I'm about to kidnap somebody and show them what's up. Like that is. I was like that. That feel that was like graduate level sex work. So you work. are like the nicest I guy in the fucking freshman. world. I can't even imagine that of you now. You know, like you're just the sweetest. Yeah. <laughs> like these days, uh, like it, I would have to lay some more ground. Like I, I could do it as long as it was like, okay, here's how we're gonna play this. So like, you're gonna wear a red carnation, yeah, so we know quote, it's you. Oh, and, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah right 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 like i I, as you get older like it's like okay that's not the craziest thing i've ever heard because i've told this story over the years and the thing i learned that i was i was surprised by and really fascinated by is it's a a really common fantasy for Mm -hmm. a lot of women and so now like like, can i just say because i get asked it all the time oh hey you're into cnc i'm like 
in theory, yes, I am. However, I don't think you'll you'll be happy with it because I'm so bad at pretending that I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you like, oh, oh God, no. This is really terrible. Also, as well, like, I'm not really in control of, like, any noise that I make. Like, it's just a mm. very instinctual thing for me. So no one is, unless you are just shit in bed, no one is yeah. believing that I'm not wanting it. The only way that I can do it, okay, this is going to be graphic, but fuck it, I've had a couple. So the only way that you i can get away with it is if literally you push my face down so i can't make any noise and keep me holding and like just keep me as still as you possibly can so i can't move with you i can't do, do you know, that's literally like the only way <laughs> that you can do cnc with me because otherwise it's like oh well fucking illusions ruined you know <laughs> like you're lo- you're clearly <laughs> liking this god damn it <laughs> Yeah, but so, but I, you know, I think that's probably pretty common because I think the illusion only goes to the point of sex for most oh, people. Right. And then at that point, you're just like, well, now we're just not just, but now we're, now, we now we're engaged in fucking. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and like the pretense has fallen away. Um, I'm not saying that that's the case all the time, but I'm saying it, it, it would totally make sense that once you got to the point where yeah, suppose, penetration yeah. is involved, you're, that you're like, okay, well, the, you know, the jig is up. <laughs> like nobody's fooling anybody anymore. Um, but, but all right. So there was that experience. And then within about a year, I was dating my, you know, kind of college girlfriend right. at the time. And she was we were talking about this kind of thing of like, Hey, you know, um, is there anything that you've always wanted to do? Because like, we've you've been fucking a little bit and we enjoy it and we both mm-hmm. like each other a lot. So, you know, even at that time I was like, Hey, look, if there's something you want to get down with, I am open. You know, I'm, I'm no prude. Right. Uh, I won't, I won't pretend to rape you apparently, <laughs> but I'll do other stuff. <laughs> And that's what I'm, so, not, I'm out. So <laughs> that's it. You won't do that. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. And so, and that was yeah. the last time I saw her. Um, no, no, she, she was like, well, I've always had this fantasy uh, where somebody, a stranger comes into my house and cuts off my clothes. That's so hot. And I was, yeah, I was like, all right. I was like, I can, I that's can like do one that. Less. It's a step and, back. It's like, you know, not quite the, the the rape fantasy but it's kind of towing that line in there it's quite hot all right but you can't be sneaky with it though because so we were like yeah let's do that sometime and so she calls me up like one thursday night she's like i'm gonna come over and you know uh my roommate at the time was gone and she was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come over. By the way, I'm wearing some clothes that I don't care what happens oh, to them. And I was like, oh, that's well, hot. I that's know what's hot up. That's a line, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so sure enough, she came over and like, you know, like slowly cut the clothes <gasps> off of her and that kind of stuff. And, and it was great. That was, that was some quality I sex. And, uh, so, but like I said, it, <laughs> Well, in, in <laughs> but but like I said, both of those cases, and it's it's sort of been the weird course of my life where I've always been with somebody that's like, hey, I, here's something I want to do, and I'm like, oh, that's great, that's way better than what I was thinking. <laughs> so, um, so I've always been like real open to kink, although my kinks are pretty, in the grand scheme of things, they're pretty pedestrian, like a little bit of mm-hmm. light bondage, and you know uh the like you know again the from beyond like a little bit of leather and and that kind of stuff um and like i've had a couple things where you know i've asked somebody that i'm with to wear certain Mm -hmm. stuff like hey how about you put on some stockings and garters tonight that'd be that'd be pretty hot and you know that kind of stuff but but I've never been like, hey, I, what I need you to do is I need you to I need you to have some bongo drums, and I'm gonna get some grape jelly, and this is this is the only way I can come. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I've just been lucky in that respect because I'm not like I'm very open to experiences, but I'm also still strangely satisfied. Like I I kind of got stuck in the like I'm happy to be yeah. here phase, where I, I'm like. 
Uh, yeah, very much so. But I'm not, but I'm also like very communicative. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's sort of just, I, I weirdly just kind of latch onto other people's kinks where I'm like, Oh, okay. That sounds fun. Let's try that. And I think the closest, not closest, but the, the stuff that I've suggested has been like the light mm-hmm. bondage stuff. Like, Hey, how about I tie you up and mm-hmm. then we'll fuck. And, and you know, I've done that a handful of times in my life and that's really fun. That's, that's a good time if you're with somebody that you trust and, you know, and they trust you <laughs> obviously, yeah. um, depending on which side of that coin you're on, but Oh, it's a um, blind yeah, dumb, yeah, but like those... me sometimes. Because like, but but uh, me oh. and my ex, um, I won't name which one, um, but an ex um, from um, a while back when we first got together, um, we had never met. We um, had met each other through a fetish um, social media page, um, like you know, so, like like mm-hmm. Facebook, but. For um festival. kind of a what, fet life yes it's fet life yeah Is yeah oh, yeah, okay. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, I don't want to be just like, oh yeah fet life and just like assume that everyone kind of knew what that was so I was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah um anyway so we kind of met through that and um it was one of those things it's actually really romantic if it was like if we hadn't met met through fet life and it was just through i don't know plenty official something it would have been such a romantic meet because we met at the train station and it's in bristol and um it's bristol temple Mead, and it's this proper old style looks like a fucking church massive clock like tower everything kind of like um uh train station and so he was getting the train into bristol i live like a f- five minute walk away from the station and it was one of those things like right we'll meet in front of the flower stand um and Mm. at this time kind of thing um and like I had been relatively single for a bit and I'd had a series of like you know online dating incidents where people just not that they were catfishers but they were definitely putting their best foot forward with the photos they were using Mm -hmm. and stuff and so I was just like hey like I don't really want to have to go through like an awkward date um if I don't fancy you and and vice versa I don't want you to have to feel like you have to kind of follow through with anything like if you don't fancy me so why don't we just kind of like we'll walk up and we'll just both go yes or no and if one of us is no we just walk away and that's it like boom and um and he was like yeah okay cool fine so he comes up and everything and um he uh he steps up to me and he's in this suit he's this like six foot two guy broad fit as you know and I'm wearing Mm. this like fitted bodycon dress right with stockings heels and not a lot else and um he uh he comes up to me we're both like yes and then we have this kiss and he dips me Mm. I'm very aware I'm not wearing underwear and I am wearing a very short tight fitted skirt (laughs) you know so Mm -hmm. I'm just like this is so romantic but also uh, get me up um and anyway so he's like where where do you want to go I'm like well there's a bar around the corner or my flat has a bottle of uh, has a bottle of wine in in the fridge Mm. we we take the latter so (laughs) I've never met this guy before we've known each other all of 10 minutes and literally within 10 minutes of me being having met but being inside the flat where my flatmate has you know very kindly fucked off to her friends for the evening because she knew I had this potential date but she also doesn't know who this guy is and no one knows he's come to see me and I'm tied up black blindfolded on my bed with this complete fucking stranger and um luckily he wasn't a psychopath but <laughs> but yeah there was um a lot uh, I gave him a lot of trust that night and probably this like a bit of dumb luck um yeah <laughs> really grateful that i have like I, I swear to god my guardian angel is just i swear i've gone through about 10 of them just in the last like 15 years alone <laughs> that i fucking quit she's so fucking stupid i only have so much fucking <laughs> magic god can you just yeah can we send someone else like i'm done i'm fucking done this this bitch you know <laughs> like how many times do we have to tell her not to go to a second like, location and it's like she's trying to go to second <laughs> locations exactly she brought it up she she brought it up to somebody can we go to a second location she said (laughs) although i just yay for me i just recently found out and downloaded the app of is it 
what three words? So, if I do, what three words? Oh, I don't so know I just this. Found one. Out about this. Every person under the age of twenty-five okay. is like, "Oh my god, guys!" Like we have listeners under the age of twenty-five. Um, uh, yeah. But like, yeah. So basically, it's this app, and you and you can also do it through a web browser. But an app is just so much easier and quicker, and that's what you want, right? Um, mm-hmm. And basically, at the entire globe has like um a um i don't know what i can't remember what the parameter is it's something like real small like a three meter parameter or something maybe even less um and basically um it has three words random words allocated and so if you say that if you get a random call with someone just saying three random words then that's them telling you where they are and this is like a night you can do this you call up to 911 and you can or 999 or anything and like everyone's trained to know about what three words um so Mm -hmm. that yeah if you are in a predicament and you just need to or like in a situation where um like you need to subtly be like hey red alert kind of thing um then yeah you can just do that so i'm just gonna open up and see what my Actually, no, like, maybe I won't do what my three words are right now because then I'll tell everybody where I live. Um, but yeah, basically, it's this big it's a safety feature. So yeah, hmm. um, so I now have that on my phone. So there you go, Guardian Angel. Look, I'm maturing. I don't know what I'll say one from me. Right. But <laughs> yeah, you don't need a Guardian Angel anymore because you've got an app. <laughs> There's an app, an app for, that. for that. Exactly. So yeah, but what three words? Yeah, it's like a real, it's li- a literal lifesaver sometimes. But at least, you know, if or like if you if you end up going missing, but they know your last three words and it's like a starting point for the search. Huh. Okay. All right. Well, that's yeah, cool. There you go. Um, <laughs> Edutainment is what so, we're about. All right. <laughs> so let me ask you this. We'll talk about the movie here in a minute, but, you know, just talk about, you know, kinky sex is yeah, fun too. Um, so let me ask you this. Cause like my early experiences that I, I was telling you about, like that was sort of weirdly, it was early on enough in my sexual history that pretty much it, it, it sort of demystified kink a little mm. bit where it was like, Oh, everybody's got the things that Everyone's turn them got on. That something. Right. And and usually it's because of like when they hit puberty, they saw some cartoon that had something on it that made them like, oh my God, there's something about like fluffy blankets that just gets me twisted and, or whatever it is, you know? Yep. Um, I saw that episode of the Smurfs where people were going around biting each other on the ass and turning purple. And now if somebody's painted purple, it Not gets me hot, fighting. you know, that it's kind of purple. shit. Right, it's not the ass fighting because that, you know, that's just painful. But <laughs> but because I had, <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Look, I, after dealing with kids all day long, I'm like, these kids are never gonna get laid. Their their asses always <laughs> smell. Um, anyway, uh, point being that it demystified kink enough so that when you know I was going on to more serious relationships. Yeah then it seemed very natural to have those discussions. Like maybe not night one, but sometimes, but most of the time it was like, you know, after you, after you've been dating for, you know, a couple of months or whatever, and you're, you kind of not fall into a routine, but it's like the sex becomes an expected Mm. thing. And you're just getting into the point of like, Oh, we're really kind of exploring what we like and, and what gets you off and what mm-hmm. gets me off. And th- so it seemed natural to have that discussion of like, Hey, what is the weird thing? You know, what, what is your thing? What is, what is the, the weird random thing that you are embarrassed to, to tell people that makes right. you come, but it definitely <laughs> makes you come. Yep. And, um, and, and so, you know, I, like, like I said, very, very rarely have I been the person that is like, Hey, I need you to do this thing for me. It's always been way more fun for me for someone to say like, Oh, you know what I really like is, you know, I really like it when I'm blindfolded and you know, you come up from behind or something yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. you know? And 
that kind of stuff. And so I always had a great time with it. And I always felt like, you know, I, I, look, my past is littered with failed relationships, but generally speaking, the sex was never really the yeah. problem, you know? And I think a lot of it is because of that, of the fact that we were so open uh, from a fairly early stage in the so relationship. Important. Not only just in relationships generally, but when it comes to sex, I mean, fuck, if you can't talk about it, then you, can, you shouldn't be fucking doing it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. And and being able to being able to be honest about it. Like that's the other thing like you know, talking about sex, like the worst thing is being with a partner that is a little too reserved mm. about it or embarrassed by it and it's like, look, don't like Again, you know, like from beyond is one of the things that activated me <laughs> as a kid. So like I'm a sleeper cell, a sexual <laughs> sleeper cell that was like, I got, I, I got activated by from beyond. Um, like from but yeah, so I'm pretty up for, <laughs> from, yeah, from behind is the sequel. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, like one of the things that I would always go to is like, oh yeah, there's something about like you know, like you said, like leather latex PVC, that yeah. kind of stuff of just like that kind of skin tight. And especially if you throw some high heels in and I'm like, Oh, that just, uh, that fucks me up all kinds yeah, of yeah, ways. Yeah. You know, like I just, I, I just get absolutely stupid for it. And so, you know, I would always start from that place and volunteer that information. But the thing that has been my experience is that again, women are just so much more like creative <laughs> it's so much more elaborate i, I think it's because um, than we, most men we our our you know because obviously like your mind is such a you know they say that the brain is the biggest sexual organ right um mm -hmm. you know this isn't news to anyone you know the way that you think and the way that that you respond to stuff mentally is such a huge drive but the way that men and women respond to things mentally are very different so men are very visual you know um mm -hmm. so you know watching porn is okay not always more favorable to men but like it's it you know usually more men than women will go to porn in order to like you know when they have some alone time um and like uh you know they like to see women in front of them them going to a strip club is very different experience to a woman going to what like a magic mic um show or something do you know what i mean like you know mm -hmm. um yeah. whereas women are much more like you know touch and um sensation and those things so we have to we have to be more creative you know because a guy just walking around naked in front of us while that is lovely and will certainly be like what's up you know that's not enough to get us there that generally that's not enough for us to you know we need we i'm not saying that every woman needs all of the garnish and all of the you know spangles and banners but we need more than men do generally to kind of like get on that real like juice train for lack of a better term i'm looking at my bullet train uh, blu-ray so that's where that came from <laughs> yes yeah, so it's right in my eye line um and, <laughs> and there's nothing more phallic than a bullet train <laughs> right um but you know the you know to get our juice, juices real real flowing like we need more than just some guy like walking around looking good whereas guys for the most part again this is a generalization this isn't going to be the same for everyone but generally like you know you have a woman turn up in some nice underwear or whatever and they're going to be like you know bugs bunny fucking tongue rolling on the floor type thing <laughs> sure that yeah, the eyes popping out yeah, 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 the heart yeah. kind of like bumping out of the chest that whole thing where yeah, it's yeah. like you know we're very much the you know we're much very much lola bunny gun like walking by or cool and shit like yeah what up you know um mm -hmm. and then why i'm using fucking cartoons as an analogy here um always goes back always, to cartoons uh, and can we fucking lola bunny i'm sorry if we talk about sexual awakenings like and did you ever watch the um oh, i even had this, i had this conversation with fucking jamie ages ago about the caramel the dairy caramel the dairy milk caramel bunny did you do you know this do you remember this no no no, no. Oh, so it's like there was this advert for you know Cab Cabri's caramel yeah and yeah. it's this bunny and she has like a little 
fur and she's got eyelashes and shit and she's so like seductive and the way that she just bites off the square of chocolate and things and it's an animation but it's just like what oh <laughs> uh, okay i'm yeah i'm looking up pictures right. now and yeah you're right like she's she's yeah, parted 100%. up she's gussied up right am i right yeah oh my goodness what are you saying there, uh, there, no, there, there was a uh, one of the ads is her in a totally sexy pose, and it's it says still yeah, got oh, it, yeah, Cadbury caramel. I'm like, holy she shit! Away, and then now I want to fuck yeah, this and rabbit. Then they brought her back. She, they they stopped using her for a bit, and then they brought her back. I don't know why. I was I was a kid, um, so it might have been like maybe they got complaints from people going, "This bunny's too sexual for a fucking chocolate bar," but. Um, you know but and then they were like yeah and then all the dads were like no no bring her back she was great you know um yeah 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 sure enough yeah i'm sorry i got distracted like you said this this bunny is ready to go yeah she she kind of you know she gives um jessica rabbit a run for her money you know and she's actually a Mm -hmm. rabbit so yeah um yeah anyway so uh well and we know what they're like (laughs) right um i've got a couple of rabbits though they're fun um but yeah the uh yeah that like the whole the whole visual thing you know like it's definitely much more of a, a guy thing like what i was going to uh, talk about like the um sort of my kink awakening my, my kind of the, it wasn't really an awakening it was the first sort of like turn in the lock you know um mm-hmm. and it was it's kind of funny you were saying you kind of like go with other people's thing this was my kind of i'll do this for you like i don't really see what the deal is but i'll do this for you i was going out with this guy i was 16 um and um he had a thing for pvc underwear um you know like lingerie and um Mm -hmm. i just remember it was his birthday so but i was only 16 and to get to so i wasn't we didn't have the internet for shit like that back then there was no fucking way I was buying underwear off the internet at 16 back in like 2004. No. Um, Apart from anything else, like I didn't know how to delete search, like search history or anything, or even know where to go. Um, But I knew that there was um, a shop called Am Summers, which is this big um, sex shop chain. And it mainly caters for underwear, but it also has like a back room where it has like Mm -hmm. sex toys vibrators and like more kinky underwear but you have to be over 18 so i basically remember asking my mum to come with me oh (laughs) my god i i couldn't imagine so and like me and my mum we've always been pretty open like she knew that we and him were having sex i was on the pill it wasn't like you know and she was one of those mums like you can always talk to me and stuff and there's that you know there is a difference though between hey I can talk to my mum if I've got questions to hey mom can you come and buy some like you know kinky underwear with me at 16 yeah cheers thanks mom bye you know like um but I don't I can't even remember how that conversation went down but somehow it did and we ended up there um and she bought me this like um I remember it's ridiculous because um just thinking how ridiculous it was because it was literally like three triangles of pvc attached with string and it was like 32 quid and and i was just like what but it was like either that it it was some full-on like gimp gear and i was just like well baby steps um (laughs) (laughs) right 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 so my mum bought me bought me this underwear and the guy did really really appreciate it um but i also but i remember when i put it on being like oh okay there that is not hating it yeah yeah you know like it was something i'd never thought of for myself it was something i'd never been like hey i wonder what that's like or even really seen to to like you know know to even have that thought enter my head of being like oh maybe i'll try it. but you know like i had this guy who had like a real kind of thing for for latex and pvc so i was like, all right then cool and then yeah put it on i was like not hating this um and then it kind of ended up um sort of like opening up not a floodgate because it wasn't like boom all of a sudden i'm like you know kink master 101 but it was like it you know it definitely sort of started me down that path and like and i remember 
having after that me and this guy broke up having this fuck buddy and it wasn't too much longer I was still 16 um and I remember uh he lived on the other side of town now I know that that can mean a lot of different things for people this was like an actual town um but the mm-hmm. walk from the center of town to his house was a good half an hour um okay. and I was just I told my mum that I was meeting some friends in town because if I said I was going over a friend's house she'd be wanting to know which friend that's not where I know where all your friends live that's not where your friend lives are their parents are, blah, blah, blah. okay it would come with way more questions than just hey mum can you drop me off in town you know so she dropped mm. him off in town and I'm <laughs> I'm wearing because this was my um like when I was a teenager I was very much living my best emo life and also mm-hmm. a massive Buffy and Angel fan and I had a massive proper genuine like 100% wool or whatever thick fuck off trench coat like Angel Sally nice. right yeah, yeah. fucking oh such a great coat lined everything but like so I was wearing that with heels. I don't, my mum, I don't say, I must have thought my mum was the biggest fucking idiot because even without seeing what was underneath that coat, she still saw that I was wearing tights, which I never wore and fucking mm-hmm. open toe stilettos. Yeah, I'm just going like, just drop me from time, just me and some friends, mum. Saturday afternoon. You're right, right, right. And she's like, mm-hmm. uh huh. All right, yeah. well. For the love of God, please don't yeah, get Yeah, basically, you know, like, you know, you can come back to the house. No, no, I'm fine, fine. You're like, if you and your friends want to... No, I'm fine, mom, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. Um, anyway, so yeah, well, I wasn't wearing tights, I was wearing stockings with suspenders and a lace corset and, like, a whole thing underneath this coat. And I remember walking from town this whole way to his house. What I didn't anticipate was how windy it was. <laughs> Oh, no. and how many cars I was going to have to pass <laughs> and you know although I was 16 I hit puberty at the age of 10 so yeah, it wasn't like I looked like a little girl like I was an e-cup back then because <laughs> girls always had had been top heavy shall we say um, mm. you know and I just remember just no longer feeling cool and sexy no no just clutching not only the front but i had that big you know they had those big slits at the back yeah yeah, yeah also yeah. clutching my coat together like i just sat myself trying to fucking walk up this road in stilettos which i was not used to wearing and had bought specifically for and had definitely not worn in advance god i was a dumb fucking kid i was so fucking stupid and I remember getting up to his house sweaty, my feet hurt, my makeup was probably running, my hair was definitely not quaffed anymore. And just being like trying to like right. sort myself out before he opened the door. And like, yeah, I mean, luckily, guys don't really care about that shit so much when you present yourself the way I was presented, because all about the visuals, right? But like, yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm never fucking doing that again. You better fucking enjoy this because this is a one night only kind of deal. You know, like he didn't enjoy it for the record. Um, but yeah, like the whole kind of like underwear thing. But I mean, my, my, my nan, she, I remember my nan used to travel all the time and she loved to go to Italy. And I remember at the age of 13, her coming back, it's like, she's like, okay, but it's so weird because my nan was very religious and she was pretty conservative. But I remember at the age of 13 one time, her bringing me back Italian lace thongs. Well, that seems like an inappropriate gift. I mean, yeah, I was even wearing thongs at 13. I was like, Nan, all right, thank you. I will put these... (laughs) <laughs> right what what are you saying are you saying that it's time to show yeah, off the like goods i will put these in my drawer until i am ready to wear them thank you don't try to rush me with these things man you know like... right right, but right i remember being like 15 when i started then having sex and being like oh cheers man great <laughs> you know, like... but yeah so it's kind of like these kind of like these three those three sort of events for me like really stick out in my mind as like opening the doors for sort of toying around with underwear and 
you know, and dressing up and all of that kind of stuff. Now I have fucking bin bags full worth of fucking shit. I remember this guy on Tinder recently asked me, oh, hey, like, so would you dress up? And I'm like, bitch, try me. What do you want? I got this, I got that. I got. I was like the guy in fucking from Dust Till Dawn. I got big pussy, I got small pussy. I got, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, like i was just like name it mate i got it <laughs> you know like i can work something out um but yeah so like it was just kind of funny because i was like watching this and i just i know that this film especially barbara Cranston, just being such a, a oh hey kind of moment for so many people especially in the horror community be, um like I, be, I think a lot because of this film although she is very attractive in a lot of other films as well um Mm -hmm. and stuff and I was just like I wonder what Bo had like it was this was like a whole oh hey moment like if Bo's had like a oh hey moment with like underwear and sexiness and kink and things like that oh for sure for sure um you know the this movie was part of it I think I don't there was something about um I I think it was it might have even been dressed to kill or body right. double. Maybe it was body that would make double. Sense. But it was one of those yeah, one of those movies that had like on the cover, it was like a woman pulling up the stocking and like clipping it onto a garter uh, belt. Thing. And I remember Yeah, I remember being a kid and just being like thinking that's what that's what sexy looked yeah. like. Yeah. You know? And and then, you know, you get to something like From Beyond and and worth saying in the story of from beyond you know uh, barbara crampton's character is um this very uh sort of reserved very uptight very studious like she's very career driven mm -hmm. kind of thing and because dr pretorius who was inventing this machine called a resonator that activates the pineal gland yeah. Um, and you know, it has like the, the you know, it, like Pretorius is a guy who chases sensuality, although we learn at the end of the movie, the reason that he's doing this is because he's yeah. impotent, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, Jeffrey Combs says, you know, you never gave anyone pleasure that you could only give them pain. Um, like, but say anyway, this, so, Sarah? right, right. And <laughs> yeah, you don't want her to, you don't want to absorb her mind. You don't want her to know what you're really like, what you are, you know, that you can't actually satisfy yeah. a woman. Um, it's yeah, a great yeah, yeah. Line. So, like, yeah, it, it's, oh, Jeffrey Combs is he so is good. So at good this. At uh, he it ate his head <laughs> like a gingerbread man. <laughs> It so is. good. Oh, the script in this film is so like there are some fucking. It's been a, it's been a little bit of time since I've watched it because you and I were going to be recording a bit ago, and then I was really sick, and there was some stuff going on and whatever. So it's been it's been a, a moment since I've watched it, but like I just remember like watching it and just being like, oh my god, that's gold. Oh my god, that's awesome. Oh my god, that's so great. You know, like just constantly. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I, again, I think because they were doing this on the the heels of mm. Reanimator, they knew what they had with Jeffrey. Yeah, Combs. they were just like, letting him have fun with it. I think, right? Like, like even the first time that you know after, so the beginning of the movie is Jeffrey Combs is like has this machine that he he's the new program is working, so the resonator is working. He goes to get Pretorius. And they turn it on and they see these, you know, creatures swimming around. And basically what the, the machine does, the resonator, is it activates your pineal gland so you can see this, like, other reality that is happening around us all the time that we can't yeah. see. And so uh, one of the, like, Pretorius is going nuts because this is you know the the limits of sensuality and knowledge and pleasure and all of these he might things actually be able to tap into some of that <laughs> right right maybe he can finally get a sniffy <laughs> and uh but instead he gets his head eaten off hmm. by something hence hmm. the like <laughs> you know he wanted head uh, but that's not what he wanted <laughs> ah. but yeah so the the idea is that uh, Barbara Crampton's character is this 
a psychologist who has all these like new uh, methods of, of treating patients. And because Jeffrey Combs is accused of, uh, you know, basically killing Pretorius, yeah. she's like, no, well, we're going to treat this by taking him back to this house and letting him sort of live with this delusion that they, you know, tapped into this other dimension. But what they find out, of course, is that this other dimension yeah. is real. And that when you turn the, this thing on and it, it starts to wiggle your pineal gland, it can have different mm. effects. And so the effect on Barbara Crampton and also a little bit on Jeffrey Combs mm. uh, is that they get all horny. Nice when... Yeah. And, and so I think part of the kink thing that happened with watching this movie was partially the like, hey, I'm going to get all gussied up in leather. Part of it, too, was, oh, here's this, you know, the so-called good girl of the movie that is suddenly this oh, sex Oh, she had pop. a Sunday moment, you know? You're yeah. Right. And and I so, does. you know, th and that was the, the thing that I think I, I don't know that it, like, it totally clicked at the time, but it, it since it is certainly a thing I've thought about of like, oh yeah, there is something, you know, terribly sexy to me about that, that not exactly corruption of the innocent, <laughs> but that sense of like, oh, given a little bit of freedom that that sort of inhibition goes away yeah, and somebody who could be, yeah, for sure. And, and so, yeah, like, so that is all happening. Like it, it's this weird combination of, Barbara Crampton being attractive to begin yeah. with. Now she's getting all done up in leather. Mm -hmm. Also, there's a bondage element to yep. it. And this kind of BDS, BDSM vibe. And also, it's because she was like the nice girl up until this moment. And now she just wants to get like tied up and fucked. Yeah, no, definitely. And... And all of that stuff was just like, I, this totally does it for me. Like that, that is a combination of things that I, I can absolutely. But that taps on. into such a primal thing, doesn't it? Like, you know, shedding the shackles of society and what we're brought up to believe. And, you know, we have to be this and we have to, you know, we can't possibly have these base desires or whatever. And really, actually, we're all human. And all we, all we are designed to do at our core is fuck, sleep and eat. Like that's, that's it that's yeah. all we are good at really like all of this other stuff our intelligence our society all the rest of it whatever you know that's all stuff that's been built up but we don't need that stuff to survive all we need to do is sleep fucking eat and like mm -hmm. you know and i think people are kind of worried about that because it brings us back to a more animalistic level and god forbid are we just animals and you know and i think it it, it when we see something like this on screen where someone sheds all of the extra stuff and just comes back to their base instincts it excites something in us because it allows us to be like oh that's okay like we can we can do that as well like I had a conversation with one of my like oldest bestest friends because um recently um on my Instagram page I've started posting saucy pictures a little bit like not made not anything mm -hmm. like i mean christ compared to the internet it's really really pg-13 but you know a little bit here and there is fun and she doesn't she's quite a conservative person um you know and she's a lot more she's not um i mean she's perfectly you know like um feminist and like and all the rest of it but like she can't understand she can't get her head around why doing something like that is liberating she's just like you know mm. like we were having a discussion she's like are, are you just doing it to get attention you know like surely you just want like attention from people like not in a, an accusatory way or like a thing but she was like i don't say is it, is it, it sure i can't see any other reason why you would do it apart from this and i'm like the attention's nice sure but that's not why I do it. Like I, the reason why I do it is because it does, it's very liberating and I feel sexy doing it and I feel confident doing it. 
it's like you know and yes like the attention does give me a bit of validation or whatever and you know whatever I'm not gonna say I don't I don't care about the likes or whatever like because that I like that's bullshit and I'm not gonna bullshit bullshit but that's not like the reason I do it though like I don't you know I used to um like when I like when I dress up on a night out and stuff I or I dress up for me like I don't dress up thinking Mm -hmm. hey like is such and such gonna like this or am I gonna attract this type of guy or this type of girl or whatever if I wear this I'm like nah I look the fucking shit I've got a fucking boss in my step do you know what I mean like that's for me and I mean I'll dress up not dress up dress up but I'll put a bit of makeup on and I'll make sure I look like just go to the fucking shop just because for myself I feel good for myself and like you know and I feel like when people tap into that you know that side of themselves which is sexual it doesn't have to be kinky but just sexual in whatever way that that looks for mm-hmm. you you know there is something very liberating and and, and um sort of gives you a bit of self-indication you know and i think when we watch a film like this or anything else where you have that you know good girl image turn into oh hey what's up you know they you never you never <laughs> see it see that narrative where the girl suddenly feels like she's a piece of shit you always see that narrative where the girl's like fuck yeah look at me man i'm the fucking shit like i like i'm not a piece of shit i'm the shit you know and there's something really yeah. empowering about that and i think that like as a guy you're like fuck yeah and as a girl you're like fuck yeah you know <laughs> so like yeah it's great and i think there's an element too especially in from beyond as i've you know examined this movie over and over and over <laughs> and over again I, <laughs> um, I I think there's an element to that not only is it her like owning her sexuality and, and exhibiting a, like a very confident sexuality but it's also like well but also it's not her fault yeah. you know like she is not she's not like breaking bad because she's decided to necessarily it's like no, she's doing this because she's under the influence of this other yeah, thing. Yeah, there is that. Oh, yeah. But that, <laughs> you know, but, but, and, but that also gives you license, uh, you know, as a viewer to kind of, you know, chase that idea of like, oh, yeah, I could be that person mm-hmm. too. Like if I, if I step into that room with that machine, then all of a sudden, you know, I've got a, a raging heart on and I'm ready to get it's down. It's like a superhero thing, isn't it? And, and that's okay. It's like, I want to be like Spider Man. It wasn't done, it wasn't something he chose, it was done to him. But if I got bit by a spider, yeah. I could be a fucking badass night, like, you know, from the neighborhood <laughs> Spider Man as well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and there's something about like it, I don't have to take personal responsibility mm, for it. Yeah. I can just enjoy the effects yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. That there, there's something about that idea that I think is, is really liberating. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and, and that's kind of, you know, one of the things that's so weird, I think about this movie is that it doesn't have the, the sharpness of the story of reanimator. Cause like, you know, once we get into the house with, you know, Ken Fury and Barbara Crampton and mm-hmm. Jeffrey Combs, and they start playing around and turning on the machine and stuff mm. like that. And it's like they turn on the machine and they get all horned up and then monsters come and then they turn off the machine and then, you know, the machine turns itself on and they get all horned up and then monsters come, you know, it's a little bit of a rinse and repeat. And then they do this detour at the back end of the movie where they all go to the hospital. Well, Ken Faree doesn't, he gets eaten by a bunch of little bugs. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's it's fun to see him in this movie. What one of my favorite things in this movie is when he's being attacked by the bugs and it, the character's name is Bubba. <laughs> and you get to hear Barbara Crampton scream, "Bubba!" And there's something very funny to me about someone very intensely yelling yeah. Bubba. <laughs> it's yeah, it's very um oh, what's the word? It's kind of incongruous and it like just just so stupid but at the same time like it's such a serious situation (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. i mean right it's literally life and death but also like 
like, it's it's very yeah. silly. Um, but yeah, so like Ken Furry gets eaten by these bugs, and Pretorius, we learn, just wants to like eat everybody so he can absorb their consciousness. Yeah. And and also to leave the machine on so that he can essentially, you know, whatever whatever thing ate Pretorius and and absorbed his personality, um, just wants to keep doing that until one presumes it just consumes everyone and everything yeah, in the world. Yeah. So that it can know it can know everything. It can know every sensuality and every pleasure yeah. and and you know, every uh, every human being's thoughts and emotions and memories and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, power hungry entities tend not to know their limits. They're never like, oh, do right, you know what? Right. That's actually enough for me. I'm good right now. You know, they, they always need their right. seconds and their dessert and their elevenses and their, you know. <laughs> their elevenses. I had to explain. Uh, so we were doing a story the other day in class. Uh, great story, by the way, if you've never read it, called Lamb to the Slaughter. Which is a Roald Dahl story Ooh, no, but about a, a woman. Roald Dahl darkness. Um, it, it's about a woman who is six months pregnant, and her husband comes home and says, uh, "You know, hey, uh, we've had a good run and all, but I'm <gasps> going to leave you." And, and so she says, "You know what? Uh, I understand. We're, we'll work this out. Hang on a second. Let me run to the <laughs> cellar real quick." She goes down to the freezer grabs a frozen leg of yes, lamb comes back upstairs and brains him with it Fuck and kills yeah. him and the end of the story is her uh like after she kills him with it she throws it in the oven and then police show up and are like hey we find the murder weapon we're gonna find out who killed him and she's like oh well i i wish you the best of luck by the way the lamb in the oven is done would anybody uh, like some and so <laughs> they all eat the murder Brilliant. weapon and but w part of the story is her setting up her alibi of going to the local grocer and asking uh for vegetables and she tells the grocer like you know hey um i, I have lamb at home that was frozen i just threw it right into the oven do you think that'll be okay and the grocer's like yeah that sounds fine do you know do you want some potatoes and that kind of thing so she's buying some vegetables and he says uh do you need anything for afterwards and i had to explain to my students who are you know freshmen uh and so therefore dumb <laughs> and uh but i had to explain like oh that's she's talking about desserts wait, I, I, wait so you know look you had to explain what desserts meant not desserts they understand the word dessert but they don't afters. understand afterwards <laughs> yeah what's for afters is like that's not an expression in in is the it states not? it's not what's for afterwards is not something that an american would say it's, to another american you would say what's for dessert they, it just it's self-explanatory what's for afters what do you think fucking pudding have you had have you had well, two right. fucking courses no so what the fuck do you think it is <laughs> So, that blows, but yeah, so mind. I do you know explain what? that, that to blows him. my mind. The concept of afters might blow their mind, but the fact that they don't know what fucking afters is, Jesus Christ! Have you have you told them about elevens? It'll blow their fucking heads. No, 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 no. I elven's That's what made me think of it. Is I was like, oh no, we haven't even like cracked the seal oh, on elevens. Oh my god, yeah, and supper, and tea, and afternoon yeah. tea. Oh, that's a whole fucking plethora of like mini pre and post and in between meals of the meal right but if i start getting into that they're just gonna think that like truly amir uh that, you've lost you it. know england is nothing but england is nothing but hobbits england you is know nothing eating but every hobbit well you know let i'm five foot two and my feet are hairy as fuck i i can <laughs> speaking of and kinks. i live in the shire so yeah i can attest that england is nothing but hobbits at least as far as this uh, far. Anyway, this house. <laughs> My kid's the same. She's tiny. She eats. And she's, yeah, she, she didn't want to fucking go anywhere either. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, but it was, it was kind of fun to, and they were like, you know, oh, they have a different word for that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, the, the old saying, uh, we are two countries separated by a common language. Yeah, exactly. Like, we have all your words, plus plus mm -hmm. more 
because we can handle more words in our brains. <laughs> I'm really That's joking. right. I'm really and, 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 and we stopped pronouncing H's and long apparently ago. apparently you have no use for the, for the letter U either, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we got rid of that. Like, we say herb instead oh, of herb. Oh, yeah, does my fucking head in. I can't stand it. And, you know, yeah, we saw that you and favorite yeah. and color, and we were like, what, what's, the, what's point? the point? I just, it's the, it, you've just lazied <laughs> it up. You've just lazied up English. It's like you will, you'll stop at the first M on program. Yeah, have you met an American? Yeah, I know. Of course. It's very fucking up. Of course it's lazied up. It's very fucking yeah. up. But, like, it just makes me mad because because <laughs> I'm fucking British and <laughs> like everything about if you like can talk our fucking our Queen's language or well, King's language nowadays. Well, not yeah, no, not the like, Queen's language well, anymore. Isn't, isn't my day, so um, yeah, the the Queen's language these days is utter silence. Mother. Like, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Take that, take yeah. that, England. We did. Um, <laughs> we got a holiday yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah yeah like the only the only way we'd get a holiday in america is if like lizzo died <laughs> they'd probably let us all off for a day for that yeah <laughs> yeah Lizzo is great <laughs> Sorry, I'm... unquestionably like yes we would get a day off and we would deserve I wonder, it uh we'd get a whole fucking week off if adele died can you fucking oh, I'm imagine sure. yeah, jesus yeah, yeah. christ they'd be like crying in the streets i'll tell you what she had nothing on the like yeah, wait, no, the Queen had nothing on her. I always get that mixed up. The Queen had nothing, it would have nothing on her. Like, for the way that the yeah, country Yeah, I mean, there'd mourned. be Chasing Pavement oh, Day yeah. would be the the first day yeah, of mourning. Yeah, definitely, and like, I'm sure there's... And you end on hello. Oh, so sad. Because it's not hello anymore, is it? It's goodbye. <laughs> it's goodbye. Right, right. That's why yeah. it's bittersweet, and it's such a sad song to begin with. Yeah, I'm sure if I could, if I had like a list of all of her songs in front of me, I could make some really good puns from some of them. But it's um, it's gone midnight, and I've been ill, and I can't think of them. Also, I'm not really that big of an Adele fan. I like her; she's great, and I like some of her stuff. But yeah. I, I'm not like, hey, I know all of her songs off by heart. But I'm sure that there is. Listen, it's if you have, if you can think of a pun to do with death and Adele, mm -hmm. let us know. Yeah, 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 right yeah. Right into the show. Right into the show. PA box. Yeah, subject line: Adele yeah. death puns. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> <This one>? yeah, <laughs> but uh, where were we? Oh, yeah, yeah. In the movie, so they yeah, they take this weird detour to the hospital, which for my money is kind of where the movie loses me for yeah, a bit. Same it did with me because I'm like. Yeah, like, uh, fine, you know, we've got Jeffrey Combs sucking out people's brains through that's their eyeball, fun. and that, that ain't fun. bad. Yeah, that's a good time, but the rest of it, I'm like, I don't, I don't need this. Like, there because there's this whole, like, sub-story of Barbara Crampton uh, having a rivalry with this woman who works at the yeah. hospital that's like, you know, your methods are irresponsible and dangerous, and so now that you have gotten you know bubba killed and you brought jeffrey combs back all bald and looking <laughs> weird we're gonna give you electroshock therapy yeah. uh which she es escapes from thanks to jeffrey combs running around the place by the way his pineal gland comes right out of his forehead like a little you know, it reminded me a little bit of uh killed by death um the episode of buffy in season two where you have the kinder start the child death um and you know that mm -hmm. for people who don't know it's just like it's this um fucking entity that um kills children who are really really sick and they only see them when they are past a certain point of being really really sick and it has this like its eyes kind of protrude from its head and suck out like the life from the children and like if you've seen the episode that's not edited for tv because fucking blows my mind having ep episodes of buffy edited for tv um it's fucking it's mm -hmm. terrifying though if you've seen it um it's like it really kind of just reminded me of that like that protruding thing from the forehead and like the whole kind of like eating brains kind of thing like yeah that whole imagery just really reminded me of shit yeah yeah yeah, that's a good that's episode. That's a great episode. It's fucking scary. Yeah. Also, as well, on that subject, yeah, 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 my that's... kid. So, same series, um, Bad Eggs of season two. You remember they had those eggs where they have to kind of like be their parent 
and they have to like look mm-hmm. after them or whatever and then it turns out they're demon eggs and they like hatch and then they mm-hmm. latch onto the back of you and create a host out of you and shit except Xander because he hard boils mm-hmm. his and he cheats so he doesn't have to like you know doesn't fail the the project <laughs> sure <laughs> which is great um yeah so um guess who had an egg project at school this week oh yeah. no yeah like, did you hard well, boil it they actually were already hard boiled thank god because they're oh, four okay. years old not the eggs the kids looking oh, after yeah, them yeah. and it <laughs> <laughs> now those are just bar <laughs> eggs pickled yeah. up four-year-old pickled <laughs> yeah, eggs in exactly. a jar um and true to form yeah ava dropped hers as soon as she got hers through the door so we we hard boiled her mm. another one and sent it back in and cheated <laughs> So you're teaching her, like, hey, if you have a child and you drop it, then you just need to steal another. Yeah, basically, baby. that's the life lesson we're teaching them here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's it's fine. totally fine. I don't see the problem with it, honestly. So we're just teaching you about adoption. It's fine. <laughs> right. God knows those kids need all the help right. they can get in the, uh, in the foster <laughs> system. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yes, so, yeah, so the, the hospital thing happens uh ball jeffrey combs is running around sucking people's brains out and then barbara crampton gets free and goes back to the house because she's like oh i gotta blow up the resonator because if i don't then you know pretorius is gonna get free and then you know bada bing bada boom he's gonna eat all the people in the world and then um, just what that <laughs> scenario that phrase was you know created for <laughs> right of a you know otherworldly creature with a pineal gland coming out of its forehead eating the the populace yeah. of the world um but then uh jeffrey Combs steals an ambulance after like because he's kind of going back and forth between the pineal gland taking over yeah. where he just sees people's brains in their skull and has to suck it out and then being like oh my god what have yeah, i done yeah he's back and forth and he's the devil and the angel on his shoulder at this point yeah so he steals an ambulance to go back to the house but when he shows up the pineal gland is large and in charge and uh so he grabs barbara crampton and ties her up like shackles her with the the sex mm-hmm. cuffs and then uh pretorius is coming and the you know the big conclusion is that uh pa- jeffrey combs comes to his senses enough like he ignores the pineal gland long enough that he's able to like try to defend her at which point Praetorius just eats his head and it spins off like a corkscrew <laughs> <So> good. <laughs> it's it's really funny because when you see his body it looks like somebody gave him a soft serve ice it cream does, cone and stuff yeah and so um then Praetorius is going after Barbara Crampton is gonna eat her but then there's this weird thing where like all right let me i think it's like the consciousness of jeffrey combs but now he has the rest of his body also and he's kind of breaking out of pretorius's monster body and the two are just kind of fighting each other for control and basically he does it in such a way that barbara crampton gets free the bomb that she set to blow up the uh the resonator is about to go off so she just jumps through the window yeah and then it explodes and so she lands on the (laughs) the the dog is barking and so she lands on the ground is all busted up the the neighbor with the annoying dog (laughs) from next door shows up and is like you know i always knew that that place was no good how are you okay lady and then barbara crampton gives this like hysterical oh, scream yeah, laughter she's lost it you yeah she is just out of her gourd at this point and it's terrific yeah. she's really good at being maniacal crazy yeah. and laughing yeah it it was maybe there there are two well not two things there are plenty of things i really like about from beyond but 
two of my favorite things in the movie are that and when they turn on the resonator for the first time after they go back to the house and like Pretoria shows up and is a monster and everything and uh, Jeffrey Combs turns it off and says that will be enough of that. Oh, it's so good. He's, I tell you what, no one sounds like Jeffrey Combs like Jeffrey Combs. You know, like he's just everything that he says is just so Jeffrey Combs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He's kind of. I and I, I this is going to sound insulting. I don't mean it that way, but he's kind of like a B level Christopher Walken. Yeah, like oh, he's kind of almost like a B level Christopher Walken trying to do an impression of Christopher Lee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and and he's really good, and and he goes for it. Like he totally commits to whatever he's doing, and that's what makes him kind of wonderful. Is that he's doing this like silly, campy material. Yeah. But he is a hundred percent bought in. Like the Jeffrey Combs is an actor who has never like sleepwalked through a role oh, in his absolutely life. Absolutely not ever. And and between him and Barbara Crampton, same way. Barbara Crampton is is giving it her all mm-hmm. here as well. And between the two of them, they make the movie. Even when there are times where I'm like, okay, I you know we're kind of spinning our wheels a little bit or we're taking this detour to the hospital Mm. or whatever i still love watching from beyond because i think both of them are fantastic yeah yeah agreed and and with it being your first time like what was your overall overall impression of the movie did you did you enjoy your time with Beyond? yeah like i mean because obviously like with it sharing so many bedfellows with reanimator and stuff like i kind of knew going in the 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 vibe of it like the kind of thing that it would be and um you know especially with you know people like Jeffrey Coombs and stuff like heading up and things like I knew it was going to be like such a blast to watch and it just it didn't um disappoint at any in, in any way, way I think I felt the same with you with like sort of the final act um in the hospital and stuff sort of like the momentum sort of went down a little bit at that point but I was still having such a good time because, I mean, because Jeffrey Coons was just so fucking ridiculous, not in the way that he was doing it. As you said, like, it's it's almost like a straight-laced performance, but just the way that he's just putting all in and, like, the effects and, like, the visuals that you're getting from these bits, like, they're just so, like, what the fuck? And it's just such a great ride to go on. And, like, the concept is such a cool concept and it's, like, it's, batshit and it's but it's also very scientific and it's weird and wonderful and you know obviously it's based on Lovecraft so that's it's got that otherworldly ethereal thing it's just there's so many different things going on in this film like there's so many different flavors and it all kind of comes together in this amazing jambalaya of fucking weird sci-fi horror batshit pink (laughs) combo nonsense gravy you know and it was just like I just came away from it grinning just totally grinning it was yeah it was so much fun I was like I can't wait to chat about it <laughs> you know yeah I, th- I think there's something um especially fun about how like brazenly sexual it is mm. you know that that like reanimator again is kind of known for you know the scene with you know here's Barbara Crampton being eaten out by this decapitated head and that that's like shocking and weird and all that but this movie is just like throughout is all about you know that I, I like a very distinct kind of sexuality. Yeah, I would say like reanimated and, is kind uh, of crude, whereas this, yeah. dare I say it, has a bit more finesse when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, even though the movie is is goopy it's and it's you know kind of a creature feature, <laughs> slimy, yeah. moist. Um despite all of that it does have it it like it has ideas yeah. going on i mean there's a lot of stuff going on under the surface about um about that kind of thing about like you know what is appropriate behavior and you know what if you give into it and is you know, like and it's sort of ambivalent about that kind of sexuality like is it good is it bad is it a little bit of both mm. And, you know, is the pursuit of just carnal pleasure. And I think that's kind of the point of the movie is like, if that's all it is, then that's kind of bad. But there's also 
this sort of weird love story going on between Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, what saves the day at the end of the movie. Yeah. And so it's, it's very interesting. Like it's a movie that I don't think fully executes on all its ideas perfectly, but the fact that it's got so many ideas going on, like it's never not, you know, even when the story itself is is taking some turns, there's never a moment that I feel bored. No, watching. no, definitely not. It's an it's a film that feels excited. Like you can imagine the energy on set and this, like you know, mm-hmm. as you say, you've got all these like ideas kind of coming into it, and it's, there's so many different levels of things that it wants to say, and they're all following the same sort of goal. But there is a lot going on, and but it it it's that excitable energy um and like look what we got going on here and then this is happening here and then we've got this going on and this all like alludes to this and this is like a continuation of this and it and it, it does weirdly even though there's a lot going on it all does really kind of work together and it's as I say it's just this very excitable energy about it um and especially when you're watching it because obviously you know it is very sexy and there's um you know a lot of that going on with um sort of testing boundaries and like hey where's the limits on these things and where do we just become nothing but carnal pleasure where do we just give into our base desires and become nothing else you know um and all of that kind mm-hmm. of stuff and the exploration of that is really interesting and very exciting so you know it's it's definitely got all of that going for it and yeah just in every sort of sense of the word i would just call this film a very exciting film <clears throat> you know Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. It's it's a lot of fun. Going back and revisiting it again, uh, I, I was like, yeah, I still I still really dig this movie. I think this movie's a whole yeah, lot no, of fun. Yeah, definitely. I can't wait um, to kind of return to it. Like, I'll give it some time, and then I'll come back to it maybe in, like, a year or so. Um, and, yeah, yeah. it'll be one... Uh, I might say if there's, like, a, a half-decent release of it somewhere, because it would be a fun one to have in the collection. Um, yeah, yep. but... Um, and and I highly recommend watching it without pants. <laughs> I highly recommend watching it in PVC underwear. Yeah, I mean, when, whatever your mom gets has you there, because you you're uh, too young. That's uh, I. That story blows my mind. Um, <laughs> I think as well because you're American. Uh, like I know that shit just doesn't really happen in in Middletown America. Like parents aren't really like that. My mom's my mom's always just been very like. I would rather know what's happening. And know that you're okay, than not, you know. Yeah, yeah, but also, you know, maybe it's just like a, a repression thing or something. But there is just generally a sense of like, sex and your parents are things that just don't. Oh no! Cross over. Don't get me wrong. Like you just don't. I would never have asked my dad. That would never have happened. That would my my dad. It was embarrassing telling him I was pregnant. Like, because that just confirms it, you know? Like, I, I think until that right. point, he'd had... In fact, my mum even said to me, she was like, oh, so you and Michael, you, you've learned to kiss with your eyes closed? You know, like... <laughs> like because that's you know that's that's how you make a baby when two people love each other very much you kiss with your eyes closed and that was always kind of like a running yeah. joke in our house like that's how that's how babies were made right um but right, like right. i was i think my dad was quite happy to let that lie be be truth his truth you know when it came to his daughter sure sure, sure <laughs> and sure. then when i was like when i was like, oh yeah so dad like you know i'm pregnant I, re- I like I think that was probably this very much this internal battle of like very happy for my daughter but also <laughs> like my daughter you know right. like my only child my daughter <laughs> has mm-hmm, been defiled. <laughs> defiled defiled as though like I wasn't like 29 at the time and had been living had lived with several partners and like had been living with my current partner for like the last sort of three years or something do you know what i mean like this is yeah, just yeah, yeah. This, this confirms it though and up until that point she was living in this lovely bubble of virginity you know like <laughs> um although in fairness actually well i say this i'm pretty sure like my dad has had to bury his head pretty deeply in the sand i think so if he was going to believe that because he pretty much and i can't remember if i told this story so stop me if i have but on my no, 16th on. birthday <laughs> my dad 
I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we straightened up first but he like I'm pretty sure I've actually told this story on the show but he um walked in on me and this guy having a 69er wait I don't know that you've told this story that doesn't sound familiar yeah it was my 16th birthday um and uh me so I hung out with like a, a big group of lads like all the time like they were like my brothers you know like um not the guy I had a 69er with he was like you know I don't know if you have this but like I had there was a couple of like big groups of people and there was always like one of that group where I'd have a crush on them so everyone else would be like my brothers or like whatever but this one person like there'd be like one person so like the guy who I spoke about ages ago who um had a girlfriend who was gay and in love with me um do you remember that one yeah Mm -hmm. so we were all part of this big friendship group and he was the one I had a crush on so obviously he never ended up in that kind of like oh you I love you like a brother zone you know um and this Mm -hmm. guy was the guy what was his name shit I don't remember his name that's terrible isn't it what was it he had a nickname that's why I can't remember it his real name was Steve but we all called him something was it Groundhog? (laughs) I got around um I can't remember his real name was Steve though I don't know why I remember that I never called him it once um but anyway um yeah so we had this whole big group friendship group and um we all went into town and it was one of those like situations where like my my mum was constantly this is this is the thing like my mum and dad were very much like keep it in the house you know like let me know where you are so my house was always one of those like cool houses because my friends could smoke there like my parents would always be pretty chill like I'd come home stoned and my mom would make me a cheese toasty do you know what I mean like a, a grilled cheese sandwich for you guys um mm-hmm. you know and things like that and just roll our eyes and just be like oh go to bed you know like it's you're safe that's all I care about it's fine like you're not doing anything too outland you're not doing coke do you know what I mean like you're, you're 15 right. my dad remember telling me like I remember my dad coming to talk to me and telling me that he knew I smoked weed and I was just so braced to like have like the lecture or you know him to have a go at me or something and he was just like oh Kate you're 15 I'd be worried if you didn't you know like um it was very much that so like my mum waking up and coming down the stairs at 5 a.m because my mum's like a morning lark to find me asleep in the living room with like five or six guys didn't phase her because she'd be like oh it's the guys and like she'd, yeah, yeah. If she'd come in a couple of hours late and we're all stoned she'd be like right who wants tea who wants coffee do you want a shower what are we having for breakfast and they're like oh thanks so much because we would all be hung over oh thanks so much mrs kate's mum blah blah you know this is literally what she'd get called mrs kate's mum um mm-hmm. but so like when i went out for my birthday and the clubs were shutting it was only a small town so they shut at like two um and I was like, hey, everyone, let's come back to mine, right? And that's cool. And my house was the house that you did that. So um, we all went back to mine. We're like milling about in the kitchen or whatever. And me and this guy, uh, oh, it's called Boo. Oh, my God, that's so funny because that was the name that my dad, that was the nickname my dad gave me. You know, your dad always gives you a pet name. <laughs> uh-huh. Turns out it was that's the nickname that his pet name for me is the nickname of the guy who walked in and haven't given me a 69er. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Um anyway. No, that's what we call that's, serendipity. Yeah. Anyway, so um we're all milling about me and this guy scooch off to the living room, you know, shut the door. Everyone fully knows what's going on. My dad comes down because he hears the noise. He's not having a go, but he's just like, guys, can we just keep it down? You know? Um, and they're like, oh gosh, mm. yeah, no worries. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and then he's like, Where's Kate? fucking arsehole friends like I mean are they even your friends if they don't stitch you up you know and um they're like ah I think she's in the living room oh man that's that's a jerk are they even your friends though if they don't stitch you up I think I think she's in the living room and like so I have this distinct memory of (laughs) my mum having anticipated me bringing everyone back had bless her heart pulled out the sofa bed put all the sheets down you know set out like floor beds and stuff for everyone to just crash on 
So me and him had very much taken advantage of that. And I, I remember, should we just say being on top? Mm-hmm. Po- poised. Both of yes. us very, very still listening out, but not really having moved from our positions. Just very, very still. And me hearing, ah, oh, I think she's in the living room. Now, my house downstairs, the doorways met. The living room and the kitchen doorways met. That's how little time we had to sort ourselves out. And I end up getting tangled up in the sheet, trying to get off him. And my dad, I reckon, possibly did this on purpose, took his time finding the light switch. Sure, 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 sure. And Because, like, there's only so much he wants yeah, to I see. Mean, yeah, I because as well, my friends are not subtle. Like, they won't just go, oh, yeah, I think she's in the living room. They're like, oh, I think she's in the living room. Tee hee, he he he. you know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, we just managed to get ourselves covered under a sheet. We're both naked. I mean, it's, again, like, I don't, I was so dumb to think that my parents were that dumb. <sighs> anyway, my dad comes in and he's just like, oh, hey. And I'm like, hey, dad, what's up? How's it going? And like, he's never met this kid before. And like, Boo's just like, hey, I'm Steve. What's up? Just like, all right, I'm going to bed, Kate. Keep the noise down. (laughs) All right, Dad, see you in the morning. Love you, bye. That's (sighs) awesome. Yeah. I mean, was there any follow-up? Was there anything? my dad is insanely British like that. We don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. All right, yeah. that feels mm-hmm. right. No, my mum, my mum would have because my mum, mm. my mum's the person who, when I come down the next day, she's like, "So how was it?" You know. But yeah, my yeah. dad, no, we don't talk. We don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it was like Fight Club, I'm not sure that it was a proper six. <laughs> I mean, it, it depends on how much blood was involved. I mean, look. Also, if you were both the same person, I mean. <laughs> Talk about some fucking gymnastics, right? That's just right. That's just masturbation at that <laughs> point. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, but no, yeah. So um, my dad and um, his perception of my virginity probably was lost that day. But I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe he just rebuilt it back. But yeah, when I told him I was pregnant, it was kind of like I was embarrassed to tell. But like my mum, however, said like she'll like you know she like, oh, I remember actually she asked him like oh how was it? And I remember me and my ADHD you no know, fucking filtered ass fucking dead ass telling her oh so great this is this this it's okay i don't need details i just want to know are you happy you know like and yeah. i'm like oh yeah yeah it's great and she's like that's fine i don't we're, we're good for details <laughs> you know so it's not like she's not like you know my girl pal who i would give details to right. she's not like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get the like, uh, I... mimosas out let's get this gun <laughs> you know but I want to know how many times you orgasmed. Yeah, yeah, how big was his dick, you know, like any of that. Right, right, um, right. But she's just like, are you happy? We're good. That's fine. That's all I need to know, sweetheart. Would you like a cup of tea? Yes, I would. Thanks, mom. I'm very fucking thirsty. <laughs> My mouth is so dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Sure, parched, sure. you might call it. Um, but yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, so like, m- m- like me asking... And equally, though, if she had turned around and been like, Kate, I don't know if that's entirely appropriate or whatever, I'd have totally respected that as well because of the relationship that we had. Like, it was one of those things where I was like, my mom is so chill. If she says no to something, it's for a reason. And I always respected it. Well, I say always. Sometimes I didn't because I was still only a teenager. But, like, for the most part, I never really felt the need to rebel or do anything too outlandish, like, because if I would always ask my parents because I knew like I I was able to and then if they said no I would always kind of respect it because it was for it would be for a good reason because they so rarely said no you know so it's yeah. kind of like it's one of yeah, those yeah. like swings and roundabouts things like I completely get why some people would be like what the fuck but like at the same time like I'm like yeah but like I know a lot of people who went out and did that stuff anyway behind their parents back you know whereas I never really had to do that so that's that's kind of cool but yeah that is cool. I mean, again, that's that's foreign to my experience because 
you know, while the the British have their, you know, reserve manners, uh, you know, when in American households, like you just like the sex talk I had with my, my dad, I think was like, Hey, they talked about this in school. Yeah. Right? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, all right, we're uh, good. My mom gave me diagrams at the age of six. Oof. Yeah. It, it explains a lot. Right. But like, no, it's like, I was already asking her about it. So she was like, if you're old enough to ask, you're old enough to know. You're picking this up from somewhere. I would rather you know the facts than fucking think that you're going to get hairy palms because you masturbate. Which I was already doing by the age of six. Not realizing what it was, but I was doing it. You know, so like my mom was like, you know, she was just, uh, again, it was like a preparation thing. She was like, well, I mean, shit, this is early. But I guess if you're asking me about it, what am I going to do? Lie? Like the thought of lying or making up like a story like the stalk or whatever just never even mm -hmm. like she was like that's fucking stupid she was like because then that's what you're going to believe and then i've got to have this conversation again in two years and you'll think me a liar how the fuck are you going to trust anything i say you right, know right, she's right. like you know and she's like again like i don't want you going in the playground hearing bullshit and thinking that's true because who am i going to want you to get the information from me or some fucking other six-year-old you know like so it's like it was very kind of a practical thing and it wasn't like you know here's like you know boobs and penises whatever it was like you know a scientific diagram of like the uterus and like and most of it went over my head but what it meant was it normalized it for me and it meant again that i could talk to her about it if i had any questions and as a result i never did anything that i wasn't wanting to do and fully knowledgeable about like i was probably practicing safe sex in more ways than most teenagers because i was aware and like I never felt pressured I never felt like me losing my virginity was completely on my own terms you know and all yeah, that yeah. shit so it's like yeah again it swings around about like you know it's what works for the individual I think but my mum grew up in the 60s I mean Christ the swinging 60s in London for Christ's sakes and she was a hippie um <laughs> well on that hippie <laughs> note it explains a lot though right um, if you don't want your kids to turn out like, like me maybe tell them the stalk story <laughs> Well, all right. So I think that um, we have covered a lot of good ground. One, we have talked about the relationship between parents and yeah. sex talk. We have talked yeah. about kinks. And we have talked about from yeah. beyond. That's pretty good. So, yeah. I, I feel like this is maybe our most successful yeah. show. I, did you want to do segments? Uh, did we, or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh so we didn't start off with ghosted because i almost forgot about yeah. it uh do we have any ghosted well, stories um i was looking into stuff and it's not a uh -huh. story not because there aren't any but i just thought this is actually quite a fun thing that i found out and it sort of changes it up a little bit so okay. i found a new york post article from october 2013 uh -huh. And you know how we were joking earlier saying, oh, there's an app for that. This yeah, is the yeah. headline. Ready? Uh -huh. Want to date a ghost? There's a site for that. I do. What? Yeah. It's called singles.com. What is what, what? I missed that. What, what ghost. singles? Ghostsingles.com. Yeah, and we're not talking ghosts as like nowadays ghosting. Literal ghost. Literal yeah, yeah, ghost because yeah. that term wasn't around 2013, I don't think. Uh, and their tagline uh -huh. is, don't haunt alone. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, all right, let me... <laughs> I, I'm going to the site now. Okay. Um, Other single ghosts are waiting. So the idea is that you are a ghost. I think. Finally, a dating site for singles who know how to yeah. get a life. Well, an yeah. afterlife. Okay. All right. So this is a gag. I don't know. Maybe. I'm going to pick the link. All right. No, it's... Uh, wait, maybe. Yeah. It, well, it, maybe the site's come down now because it's now taking me to an Amazon. Congratulations, you have. No, I'm I'm on GhostSingles.com and I'm in the <gasps> chat. Are are you oh they must um, be the wrong link then. Yeah, i am or indeed. maybe it's just an ad i don't know i'm on my phone you can never tell uh, yeah me. go to go go singles.com forward slash html5 slash chat dot okay, html wait, hold on ghost singles.com um, what was it forward slash html five html5 yeah. forward slash that. chat dot html 
um, oh. So oh, I got a private uh, message saying, "Oh my god, this yeah, is yeah, yeah. such fucking so fascinating, like MSN chat and shit." I know, I know. Chained one has left it. Chained, chained, fucking out. Vapor babe, purgatory. Uh -huh. oh, what? Purgatory is, is pretty, pretty good. good, but also uh, no Tories, thank you. Ruffalo Lemonade. Was she? So was she trying to scare? Okay, okay, okay. Right. So a guest man says she was. This is a live chat going on. She was all, "I'm so sorry. I thought you were my brother." Fucking out. And then chained one left the chat. Then someone vapor babe goes, "What?" And then he goes, "She's just been." She goes, "I've just been trying to haunt him for years." Oh, this is going so fast. I can't keep up. And then, so hang on, wait. So she was trying to scare you. How did she mix up a ghost with the living? I mean, how truly? Like, how, how do you do that? Um, anyone know how to possess somebody? Is it just me or are there way more guests in here today than usual? Oh, ghosts can't possess people, noob. Oh, they're ghost shaming him. Possessions oh, are done sucks. by devils, 644. And then he's just gone, oh, a sad face. Are you guest 13? I was, I got booted. He's like, there is a mortal here. Yeah, what yeah, funny yeah. Guest I'm, I'm, I got booted I'm using out. their device. Dude. You've been hacked. I will make the... you... yeah. <laughs> But here's here's what's fun doing? about this is I didn't type any of that stuff. It just automatically typed yeah, so it. And there's this it. like keyboard at the bottom of the screen, and you can see when people yeah. are typing. You can... Oh, you... I've been disconnected. <gasps> the mortal yeah, is yeah. right there. I've been disconnected. Huh? What? Yeah, can yeah, I yeah. refresh? This is so exciting. I don't know. I, yeah, I bounced out at that point. It just takes you back to the beginning of the chat. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here because I get my ass haunted. I don't want to. I, I, you know, I've got to look after my kid. Um. Okay. So this is. <laughs> yeah, you you have children yeah, to think know about. What here, happens Kate. with fucking hauntings and children? Thank you. The parents die. Yeah. Um. Right. So, <laughs> so this is what the article said. Right. This is such a piss take article. I love it. Um, I'm done yeah. with living with with living women. They're so fleshy and warm blooded and ugh. So I, we are that. We are known for it. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. Often moist, yeah, yes. Oh, oh, um, slimy. I'll tell you what, though. So a fucking ectoplasm. Whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. you're right. That is yeah. not incorrect. So I'm switching to the obvious alternative. Dead women. <laughs> for so long, the deceased babes of this world have been inaccessible, locked behind some great fantastical void of grey nothingness. I think if I was called grey matter, actually. Um, but thanks to the magic of the interwebs, ghosts are quickly becoming an integral part of the online dating community. Intru introducing ghostsingles.com, a dating website where d ghosts can meet attractive ghost lovers like me who are posing as ghosts. The corner of oh, apparently not, because as soon as they detect that you're a fucking aliven, they, they kick you out. Fucking I know. Fucking I know. Um, the cornerstone of the site is a state-of-the-art search engine which not only sorts single ghosts by their gender and age, 18 years old to over a thousand years. You fucking like here's me with my fucking Tinder bracket of just like 28 to 40 year olds. And then here we've got we've got 18 to over a fucking thousand of years old, like Jesus. Um, but let's you choose between people who died horrible, mysterious, tragic, or sudden deaths. Just build a profile complete with your information, like your build, which they've given examples here. Mm -hmm. So instead of like, you know, athletic, average, you know, overweight, whatever, um, it's gone wispy, ethereal, cloudy. <laughs> and how you found the site, see a seance or fate, and you're released in, um, to frolic with the prettiest poltergeist in the universe. After haunting the site for exactly 13 minutes, we managed to narrow down the field of potential partners to four candidates, but we're having trouble picking just one sexy spectre. Um, and then here are our top four phantoms. So we have number one, Hauntress. Mm -hmm. This 173-year-old ethereal cougar is a straight talker who doesn't like fake smiles. I don't care for having one's visage marred by the perpetual smile like some fool. That's not to say I'm not happy. The lack of a smile is always a reliable bar barometer on one's emotional state. She's also a depressed loner who died a horrible death. She doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I appreciate all of this. This is pretty this is good. Right. Um, ah, shit. I fucking scrolled up to look at her picture and I've lost it now. Here we go. Um, 
She doesn't mention the details of said death in her profile, but I could always use the subject to start some interesting banter on our first date. In this case, however, it's true. I'm not happy. This is her talking again. I've been miserable since the day I died, and I've sought to reconnect with the generations that came after me by appearing to them. In every case, without fail, they react with terror at my approach. So that's her. Mm -hmm. Then we have number two, vengeful. Mm -hmm. A sprightly young thing at 119, vengeful insists her dis disposition really isn't that bad. Do not be fooled by my moniker. I don't know why I'm doing these voices, but it is a jest. Truly, I am the, among, the, among the least vengeful of all my acquaintances. Anyone who uses the word jest is a decent chance in my book. Still, I'm not sure it'll hit off with all, I'll hit it off with her friends. That's a point against her. My efforts at disturbing the living only take, wait, take only a pittance of my time. And thus I entertain the notion of diversion. If you are likewise minded, I would be delighted to receive word. She sounds foxy. Mm -hmm. Literally, what I said. Then we have number three, dead girl. So no I, but uh, three R's. Yeah, okay. So kind of, kind of like a, a skater girl. Oh, yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, her real name is Dorothy. It's my grandma's name um she's dead maybe she's on here um this presents a problem because i watched the wizard of oz that one time and found dorothy to be incredibly annoying <gasps> slander still dead girl seems to have a great personality if you're into crazy cat ladies which of course i am i used to miss my cat until she died that was like 70 years ago and then she was fun to have back around now she disappears for like a decade at a time then comes back for a few years don't ask me what a dead cat's doing hey i thought i they had nine lives lol wow what a winning sense of humor and dorothy is so with it for a 94 year old using useful lingo like lol and then lastly we have haunting eyes this option's a little different because Haunting Eyes is a complete dude, but he's so romantic. I love long walks on the stairs at night, staring down at the living while they sleep, randomly clanking the chains which bound me when I was shot from my crimes in life. He, oh, no, wait, I was literally thinking that that sounds like Edward Cullen. I said he watches random people while they sleep, just like Edward Cullen from that Twilight thing. Mm -hmm. Psycho stalkers are also so in these days. I haven't felt the temptation to partake of succulent human flesh since my execution for crimes against humanity. If the guy has enough willpower to overcome cannibalism, he's good enough for me. End of article. You know, it, it, like, it's clever. <laughs> I, I, I like the cleverness of it. I know. But it's a real sight. It's fucking, that's mental. Is that not mental? And the, the chat room is what blew me away. The fact that that was there. Do you reckon it's bots? No. I don't think so, but yeah, you know. They were like shaming the guy for like not knowing that ghosts don't possess people. It's just devils that do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but it's also tough to know, you know? It's very tough to know nowadays. AI, so, man. But I like Fucking it. Cool. I, I like everything they're yeah. doing there. Yeah, that was fun. I'll post the article after the episode drops because like it's funny. And also as well, they come it comes with photos. Of these yeah. people, right? Because um, you know we don't love disrespecting the dead, you know. Sure, That's sure, sure, in sure. This, in this gimmicky article, um, are we? Yeah. So, was there anything else you want to talk uh, about? Uh, that one? Uh, do we have any tender as the flesh? Yeah, we do. Oh well, I've got let's, three ready to go. Let, let's do this. All righty, right, ready? Uh huh. Number one. Uh -huh. This is Lee. He is thirty-three years old. Can we skip the small talk and let me eat that ass like a cupcake? <laughs> All right. Complete, okay. Complete with cupcake emoji. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So that's, all, that's literally his profile. All right. All right. Um, this one's a little bit longer, but bear with, because I think you'll find it's quite interesting. Okay. All right. This is J32. Uh-huh. Have you ever wondered if the whole vampires hate garlic theory is just vampire propaganda to get humans to season themselves? I can't, um, which doesn't actually make any sense because, oh, what? No, surely they would want them to season themselves. They're eating them. That's stupid. Jay, you fucked up. Yep. Um, I consistently take on more creative projects that I can handle. I have extensively eclectic taste in music and I'm shade of geeky. Fine. Planted a hundred, um, hundreds of trees. No, sorry, thousands of trees around Bristol. That's great. 
I believe in aliens in the hope that they too believe in aliens because then at least I know someone believes in me. 420 friendly if it wasn't that obvious. <laughs> mm, okay. And then we've got Jamie, 37. Oh, fuck. Ready? Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Even Hitler had a girlfriend. Uh, not great. Yeah, I think that that's like the standard that you're going for. I think I've already made my decision on these. Where where do you lie? All right. What's so th- give give me Lee one more time. Can we skip the small talk and let me eat wait and let me eat that ass like a cupcake? Oh, okay. Um let me eat that ass like a cupcake. The All I, right, so yeah my eh, i i think that what, what's the second guy's name uh jay jay yeah i think i like jay's the best because it it's an attempt to be clever i don't always agree with it but i like that he's trying and, he's and trying. Okay. yeah that that it's a little it's a little friendlier it's not just let me get up in them guts right okay. like Lee. Yeah. yeah and all right so what was the third one one more time I got so distracted by, let me eat that ass. Sure. Yeah. No. It, it, yeah. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. Um, even Hitler had a girlfriend. Yeah. He, that's the last on my list. Yeah. Because, all right. Because that sounds desperate. That's like saying, yeah. like, I don't have a girlfriend for obvious reasons. Because. Genocide is probably not one of them, let's hope. One hopes. But also, like, right out of the gate, we're talking about hitler like i don't that is not what i want yeah i feel like that's like at least a third date conversation at you know minimum (laughs) i mean i don't want to i don't want to talk about hitler until there's a ring (laughs) um okay so uh all right yeah i'm gonna yeah i i'm going Two, one, and three are so my Jay Lee and then Jamie. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Where, All right. Where, where do where do you land with this? Well, I appreciate the bit in the middle that I did kind of skim over, but the kind of he's creative, he's got lots of different tastes in music, and he's unashamedly geeky, unashamedly geeky. Yeah, yeah. Like that's someone says something like that. I'm a, I'm an unabashed nerd, like geeky, and I know it, and I don't care. All for that same bruh mm-hmm. um also as well he's a bit of a hippie he's planted lots of trees doing lots of great stuff in the environment that's always good um but it's the two the first bit and the last bit not the 420 bit but the bit about aliens mm-hmm. to me that speaks of someone who is trying to be clever mm-hmm. but just comes off stupid yeah i i agree i don't like that very much but also i would rather have that then let me eat that ass no i think i'd rather get my ass eaten (laughs) all right fair fair and also as well this is a real thing for me this is actually the best part of everything can we skip the small talk yes okay yes we can right 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 okay so if you're just looking for hey let's hook up and fuck i yes i agree it's uh, not even that. I don't care what we skip the small talk to, but that just initial awkward, hey, what are you up to? How's your weekend? No. Like, give me something fucking real. If that thing that's fucking real is eating my ass, I will I will take that quite happily. Right. And then, but like, it, we can skip the small talk and do anything. I don't care. But I fucking hate, fucking hate that initial like i hate it so much it's always so awkward you never know what to say you just and i understand it's a necessary part of like getting to the good stuff Mm -hmm. but if we have already got an understanding of that it sucks and like let's just move past that that's so fucking good to me okay yeah all right and then if you're gonna eat eat my ass then like i mean that's just the the icing on the cupcake sure sure am i right yeah 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 no talk about the icing on the cupcake that's uh yeah something duncan and i are both familiar with um, right <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah but jay like is coming in like strong second because yeah. geeky good guy probably 
you know and like he's pretty open-minded to shit and he likes the environment he's not gonna he's not gonna love that but then yeah hitler can fuck off yeah yeah just don't ladies and, and gentlemen uh, of the listening audience if you're putting together a tinder profile uh stalin hitler pol pot uh yeah, and- you know any any of your your classic authoritarians yeah. just you know like nobody wants to nobody wants to swipe right on a mussolini lover you know no no they don't uh, i can confirm all right yeah. oh boy boy this, this tender thing it's a fucking minefield right it, boy yeah that the hitler thing is is uh, like i got hung up on the ass and now i've now that i got over that part i'm like hitler what are you doing yeah, I think he was like, hey, I'm so dark and edgy. Check me with my, like, you know, sense of humor that's just so dark and edgy. But um, actually, mate, you just come from a bit of a fucking... Well, and also, like, even Hitler had a girlfriend. Right. And you know how that turned out? <laughs> right. That's not where we... That's not the bar we want to set. Yeah. Like, they both end, ended up dead of suicide in the eagle's nest. Let's... <laughs> Let's aim higher. Let's right. Let's aim for a little bit of happiness. Uh, yeah. Together. I'm, just... I'm all for like death to this part, but I hope I was aiming for, you know, when I'm 90 and happy and satisfied in my bed, <laughs> you know, asleep. Right. I'm just trying to get off, not, you know, become yeah, yeah. A, a, one of the Third Reich's last victims. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Uh, it's not left for you then, Bo, is it? <laughs> I just, oh, I'm so horrified. Uh, all yeah, right. Well, let's get out of here. Over. As always, yeah, Kate um i mean you were you were just the best oh you're the best you're the best i'm just, I'm just slimy so well occasionally um you want to you want to plug edenism real quick oh yeah sure why not um so because i've been quite sick lately um we've had to again put another I feel really bad we we're just getting back into our swing of like a routine and then i got fucking hit with all the germs um but uh yeah we've had a bit of a delay but we are going to be recording in the next couple of weeks because now matt's really busy um but yeah we've got my other show which is eternal darkness of not so spotless minds um and that can be found in all your usual places there's plenty of um other episodes to listen to if you haven't listened to us yet um in the gear up for when we finally get around to recording our next episode but it's just yeah me and matt um my co-host matt just um pair of idiots chatting about horror movies having some bants having some laughs and um just having fun with it basically but yeah it can be found in all your usual places great uh yeah. and and as always everyone thanks uh for listening to this thanks for listening to uh more of the dark parade stuff and yeah. uh and we'll be back next month which will be april yeah and um boy april april feels like a horny month we'll have to come up with a horny movie not th- not that this wasn't not that from beyond but from beyond's more kinky i'm looking for more pure horny like right okay like yeah like proper thirsty yeah yeah proper yeah. thirsty yeah i've been naming the episode proper thirsty yeah so yeah. all right we'll we'll work on this uh so yeah. we'll see everybody in a month thanks for listening thanks everybody bye bye, bye.